I'm delighted to welcome this morning Jennifer Baraku, who is a German lady living in Portugal and runs Holly Healthy. So welcome, Jennifer. Good morning, hello Elaine. Good to see you. So um, how did a German lady end up living in a motorhome in Portugal? <laughs> that is a good question. So um, yeah, like um, some might already know and some might not. Uh, I did all my education in Germany. So all the pharmacy, pharmaceutical stuff and psychological stuff and nutritional stuff. But then I was working in Germany quite long in a public pharmacy and um, yeah, not just that, but the mixture of being in Germany, living with this attitude that is uh, predominating there, uh, which is not very grateful and seeing how people run into their own curse more or less uh, with believing in the system we're living in i noticed um i was in the situation myself where i thought oh actually i'm in the same boat like all my clients all the clients they come up to me and tell me oh look i got an issue mm -hmm. and i say yeah in everybody's life there comes a time where you will have an issue uh, so now it's up to you if you stand in front of me in the pharmacy and wanting to have a pill or you rather think about changing something because obviously so far what you're doing brought you up until here but it's not working anymore so I've noticed it myself huh? I was like okay uh, obviously the 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 really strong feeling I have that I'm not working coherently with what's going on inside of me and that I can't really tell people what I'd like to tell them because I'm getting paid of somebody who puts an opinion on me I have to sh uh, spread uh, that got me more and more sick so it's the typical where everyone's in huh? but then I was like okay so what are you gonna do now are you gonna go to the pharmacy to one of your colleagues taking a pill or are you gonna change something and I went for the change so that's why I'm now living in a motorhome in the middle of Portugal, not seeing a pharmacy uh, from the inn or outside, just using nature's pharmacy and perfectly happy with that, helping to find other people back into their own belief and not relying on our system. Wonderful. So you were a trained pharmacist in Germany? Mm-hmm. And I understood that um, a lot of people in Germany use homeopathy. Is that correct or have I misunderstood that? I wish it would be more. Um, like all people, uh, it's just human for us to find a certain reason behind things. So we're always looking for explanations. And as there is not much scientific research potential in the hemopathics, because there's nothing really you can you can grasp it's there it's it's helping but there's no you you could not find an evidence for that in any petri dish or in any in any blood test um so that is what why still a lot of people don't do it so i wish we are probably let's say compared to americans i'd say we a lot more into alternative medication um, but still, it's the same in Germany. Once you have a white robe, you are a saint and they believe you anything. Yeah, it's amazing. And, isn't it? and as you say, the white coats are paid by the pharmaceutical companies to pump you for, full of uh, drugs. And um, yes. they, 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 want, they want customers, don't they? They don't want us to get better. They want customers. And the, the, the pills create customers and reliance upon medication. Exactly. Uh, you, you're perfectly right with that. So I don't know where it happened that we lost all our basic trust in ourselves and rather gave that responsibility away. Uh, and that is happening on, on all levels. So not just on the healthy level, but that's a big thing. Huh? So we gave this trust away and gave the responsibility for my own health. I gave this to a doctor and Let's face it, Elaine, when we go to a doctor, it's somebody you probably saw the, see the first time in your life, maybe the third time, 
he sees you for about two minutes, you tell him about this bit of what you are able to express in that moment. And from that on, he is judging something and input is putting you in a scheme and this is what you have to do now. So how come he knows that so much better than I do where it's my body and my life? Mm. But how come now, this is the crazy thing, how come now we allow this person to have this power over us? How come we believe him when we say, oh, there's something wrong, or to fix it, that's a pill. So how come, I mean, if, if you have a broken tire on your, on your vehicle, you can't just put a Band-Aid on it. That is not helping the problem. That is helping the situation in the very moment, but it's not going down to the root cause. Well, of course, pharmaceutical industry is not intended, uh, in, yeah, they, they don't want to heal. Because like you said, where is the money then? They would not, if, they don't earn from healthy people. They need people to be sick in order to continue this whole wheel, this whole really massive economical wheel that is there. And there's so much going in there. Like um, you shared this Earth, uh, Eat for Earth interviews the other day. And I love that they as well go down to this really big fact of nutrition. Because I asked myself once, I said, okay, look, we are all living in the same world, but we are all individuals. We have certain diseases constantly raising and raising and raising. How come? There's only one thing in general we all share, and that's our nutrition. So there must be something with it. There must be something. It cannot be down. Of course, we all have a, I cannot even say a decreased level of stress, because when you look back in history, there has always been stress. It's just been different. So going back really, really far, back in the days of uh, Stone Age, there might have been a big mammoth or a polar bear or whatever you came across. And it's good. This is positive stress because it brings you into your fight flight mode and you do what you got to do. Now these changes uh, in our society, it's not that we don't have fears anymore, but they're so artificial. Mm -hmm. It's about, oh my God, am I losing my job? Okay, that is, this is quite an uh, existential existential in our in our world because money is so high up in value huh? but things like um oh my god this car if i don't have this car oh my god i'm not I'm, ooh, how am i going to pay my rent next next weekend oh uh i don't have the new latest iphone oh will my friends still like me so mm -hmm. stupid chick like this but it's still for the body it's the same fear it doesn't make any difference if it's the polar bear or if it's you being afraid of belonging to something. It does not make any difference. So the fear is the fear. But the, the matter of how we're dealing it nowadays, we don't give it time anymore. It's the same when you're sick. When you have a flu, in Germany we say it comes three days, it stays three days, it goes three days. If you would allow yourself just to rest a bit and to give your body this healing space it needs, you would be fine. But what do you do? No, you're absolutely under pressure. You can't just stay home for a flu. Come on. Huh? You know what you take. And that's particularly in a pharmacy. Huh? If you stay home in a pharmacy, that's like, no way. You know exactly what you have to take in order to still function. Yes, but that's not what life's about. It's not about functioning. And what do you do with your body? You wear and tear it so bad. And then, honestly, sorry, but don't be surprised if it's not working with you anymore once you go into retirement and you're hoping to do all the things you can do now, which you've been waiting for all your life until this very moment. Yeah, there's a really high chance that this is not going to happen anymore because you've ignored all the warning signs up until that point. Yeah, absolutely. As, as you know, I bang on all the time about knowing our body. We are the experts on our body, aren't we? But so often we ignore signs. You know, people take painkillers because they've got a pain. Well, the pain is there to, to tell you that there's something wrong. Find out what's wrong. You know, like you exactly. said, you get faster on the tire. It's not going to work, is it? But so many people feel under pressure. And yes, we need cortisol, uh, you know, the, the high stress uh, reaction in certain situations but to function on it all the time that's where so many people are um kind of um uh, what do you call it they're, they're, they're kidding themselves because you cannot your body cannot function on high cortisol we have so many people now with uh, with low thyroid function and um mm. 
I, I put a post on the um, shared Dr. John Bergman's post about the thyroid function this week. And when we have high cortisol, our thyroid is low. So we need to yes, balance yes. it. Everything in our body is about balance, isn't it? Yeah, 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 absolutely. And it is in life. I've watched the, I've watched the interview you shared there. It was really interesting. And for me, it's always great to see people who are actually thinking outside the box. You know, when, when I was going to university and I studied psychology, pretty quickly I was like, yeah, great. So we're going through all the history now and Freud and Jung and all these guys. So, but that's not helping for now. It is our whole system, health, mental health, all that is so obsolete. It's not working like this. And obviously we have the proof it's not working like this. So for all the people who are attached and believe in numbers, you have the numbers. It's not helping. Like he said, we have a, like our, um, our, not just the variety of diseases, but also the numbers, they're constantly decreasing. Yeah. Although we have all these great medication, so what's wrong there? There must be something wrong, you know? And like you said, it's, it's so interesting to see why you and your body is actually the least thing you look after. It's like everything else and every, everything else, you would rather start cleaning all your windows and ironing the stuff that has been on the, sh on the shelf for years before you actually sit down and say, okay, you know what? I'm just going to close my eyes and feel what my body is actually feeling. Like you said, the pain, such a great thing of your body. It's like, it's really on you. You know, it really is acting for in your favor constantly 24 hours seven days a week it gives 100 percent of what it's able to do even though we smoke we drink alcohol we run on a very high cortisol level it doesn't give up it's still going to give you the best performance it is possible to do so and if you imagine that this physical body you have is your vehicle of your soul in this life and like in a car every now and then there's an oil lamp that turn, that comes up and it's like oh so if this oil lamp comes up on your car what do you do mm. yeah so if this oil lamp comes in your body up in your body what do you do you usually go and take a painkiller mm. and you take it so long until you ran out of oil but what happens when you run an engine without oil <laughs> it's gonna be destroyed and this is, you know, sometimes people come to me and give me the feedback of saying, Jen, sometimes you're really harsh, you know, you don't blame the people. I'm like, no, 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 I don't want to blame the people. Everybody, you know, is acting the best you can in that very moment you're in. It's not that, but I want them to wake up, not to continue this for the rest of their lifetime. Because I know in my family, like my mom has been the best example for me of how it usually works. So usually you start getting the first oil lamp on, let's say in about, if you're lucky, it's the beginning of your thirties. Mm. Yeah? So you've done all this. Okay. I got my education. Okay. I got my job. Okay. I'm, I'm just about settling and, and, get a good foundation into my career and then is oh but whoa what my back my head my neck whoa. so all these little things start and like you say oh i'm in the middle of my career i can't mm -hmm. stop now i really got to get going so give me all those band-aids give me all those painkillers give me all those supplements yeah and with those with all those great names um whatever we have german examples but you know that they always tag it with something you would like to have tag it with an attribute you would like to have so it's like perform better take this oh yeah 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 okay i can perform better then and with your mind in it of course it will help because you expect it to do so and then it will because you put all this belief in there so there is no thought without belief or a thought without belief won't do anything but a thought with the belief behind it can create war mm -hmm. and that's exactly it and that is 
if nobody wants to believe whatever I'm saying and still needs some evidence, go check placebo, nocebo effect on YouTube. It's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. It's only about the fact that you all of a sudden care for yourself. So if you take a sugar pill three times a day, at least you have this two seconds where you put attention to yourself and you're going, okay, this sugar pill, I'm taking this because it's good for me. You could do the same thing with a little gummy bear. You could do the same thing with a banana, whatever. It will be magical because mm-hmm. you put the belief in it. Yeah, that is so and that's something so we love. And then, yeah. that's yeah. really important. The belief is huge. Um, uh, Dr. Bruce Lipton, uh, the biology of belief is so profound. So any listeners who haven't uh, come across Dr. Bruce Lipton, I really strongly urge you look him up. And there's lots of fantastic videos and. Uh, audios uh, on him and believing um, in fact I did a post this week in my group uh, the perfect health wellness club about the number of clients that I've helped through cancer those who make the decision to live and take action soon enough 99% of them get through it it's when people sit on the fence they are on are they're not sure they take advice from everybody you know the world and his wife and then then they don't know what to do and so they end up doing nothing and then by then it's it's too late. Yeah. Um, and the number of people that have, have come to me, say, two, three, four years ago, and I've said to them, all oh, you need to do this, this and this, if you want to. And then they'll come back two, three years later. Oh, this is spread, that spread. And I said, well, what have you been doing? Oh, well, nothing. Well, <laughs> and, and I get accused as well, same as you do, of being, you know, harsh and direct. You can't mess about with your health. You know, there is no second chance. You have to take action. And that's why I, I link now with the behavioral profiling, the disbehavioral profiling that I do with health. I've just had somebody refer to me. It's quite an honor, actually. Um, this person's been referred to me by a very top world renowned consultant who has said, uh, who's looking after this particular lady, and, but has said her, the psychology of, of the belief around her her health um is not good so she she's kind of Uh, owning the illness rather than just you know working through it she's owning it and while ever you're owning something you're going to live with it aren't you the whole time so it's so the psychology in the health is just so so profound so what can people do jen what what can people do in a healthy uh natural world um to to help themselves well, like you, you just said one really, really nice thing that everybody can do. And that is, um, so I am are the most powerful words you can use. Huh? So you can tell yourself, I am healthy. I am vibrant. I am alive. I am faithful. All these things are so strong. Just do it. Say it to yourself. Once you'll get goosebumps, your body is going to appreciate it. And like you said, with owning the disease, it's so many things like part of your path is always undefining what you defined yourself. And this is happening when you're so little. So there's no blame. You know, everybody is like you, we are raising and then you're three or four. And then all of a sudden, you notice, okay, that I'm different to others. Okay. I have my, my own picture in the mirror. And then people start telling you, you are stupid, you are lovely, you are sweet, you are beautiful, you are a nutcase, all these things. So when all these things go into your little bowl of I am, huh? and that's what shapes your idea of what and who you are. But that doesn't mean that's right. So in our culture, it's that time missing where you actually step out this zone and check is that actually what I believe or is that just something that put on me? So you challenge these thoughts and then you come out with your own opinion. So this, this is kind of lost in our society. But what you can still do is think about what you say about yourself. Do you, want, do, do, do you define yourself through this disease? Do you say, I have multiple sclerosis? Do you say, I have cancer? Why do you say that? That doesn't, no, it not, you don't necessarily have cancer. Somebody told you that you might have a mutation in your cell growth. That's okay, but that's not something that is defined. Like that can be a situation, but it's nothing that is there. You can change it still. So if there's one constant thing in life, it's change. Remind yourself on it. 
in good time and remind yourself on it in bad times. What we tend to do as a human is we hold on it. We hold so tight to it, we don't want to let go. So once we have a definition of us, it's like, okay, now I have this. No, I don't know. I'm perfectly fine with this, even not 100%, but I define myself like this. So I'm, you know, I'm, I'm looking after this. I am this harsh German psychologist who tries to get people into their own thinking and their own power again. That's my current definition of me. Then it does, but it doesn't mean that it will be still the same in two years or five years. So it's all a matter of looking at it. And, and like I've posted this week again a lot about gratitude. So gratitude is such a big thing. It doesn't cost anything, not anything. You can do it anytime. And like what I've been writing as well, in situations where you struggle, even on an interpersonal level, if you're in a fight, ask yourself, take a moment, time out and ask yourself, what are you most thankful for? That switches your head immediately because from this, speaking on this um, neurotransmitter level, so the cortisol is up, up, up when you are in this fight or struggling and and what it does with this peaceful question you ask yourself there, it go, brings down the cortisol, the inflammation, all the arousal in your body, it just comes down and you're able to think again. Because what's happened quite a lot in this cortisol level thing on, on a psychological um, level, when the cortisol is up, you are going into your primal brain. And your primal brain is exactly that which has been programmed when you were so little and all that stuff got into your bowl, into your head of what I am, what am I? So in this, in this age, your resources were really limited. You were so dependent on, on the world around you that you really didn't have much what you could do. So most of the time you try to suppress it. You try to distract yourself or you try to act in the best favor of what you think mommy would like in that very moment because uh, you take the blame on you as a child you are the big balance of your parents and like you said earlier but this balance it's so much about you so it does matter we're all just human you know if you want to have a steak every now and then go and have your bloody steak but make sure it's not every day mm. So it's all about this balance and just allow yourself, if, it's, if nobody else speaks nice to you, let it be you at least. Yeah, absolutely. For about two years, I, um, I was a volunteer on the cancer helpline and I used to take calls from people newly diagnosed with cancer or their families. And I would spend hours, literally hours, either scraping them off the ceiling because they were so het up and anxious and angry and everything, or picking them up off the floor because they had been spoken to in a way that was so awful. You know, you've got X amount of weeks to live or, you know, this is going to happen to you, that's going to happen to you. So the language that's used by the white coats to people is, it, honestly, it really annoys me. It's so, so bad. So you have to kind of undo that. Um, and when you're in a, a vulnerable situation and you, you've, you've got all this information coming at you, you, you know, it makes, it makes your situation worse. So self-talk is just really, really important and gratitude. You know, I'm, I'm grateful every day. I mean, um, I think, you know, I was given a year to live five years ago and every day, every day for me is my birthday. Every day is Christmas. You know, I just love my life and I live a very, very simple life. Um, I've had over the years, I've had distractions that you, you know, you can't believe. It's just a scene really when I look back. You don't we don't need any of them you know we can only drive one car we can only you know sleep in one bed and, and so on and so forth so uh, no life life is good tell us jen about your walking because um you're you're, you're big into grounding aren't you it, it, tell the listeners about the grounding and, and why walking is so good yeah well i i believe that a lot of the disconnection we have within ourselves is based on the disconnection we have with nature because if you think about the average all day, every day life, when, when are there actually moments where you are in touch with nature? And I'm not talking about the three minutes you're standing at the bus stop in the rain waiting for the next bus to turn up. That is not being in contact with nature. That's you being annoyed why the bus is late again. <laughs> what I mean is getting out 
getting out in the forest, literally or stupidly or exaggerating speeding, hug that tree, hug it. Why not? If people look at you weirdly, they haven't done it before because once they did it, they know. <laughs> if you hug a tree, it's special. So generally speaking, going down, uh, going out in nature, take off your shoes. Ask yourself, when was the last time you actually touched the soil with your bare feet? That does something with your body. So I believe that it's easier. I see being out in nature like a pause button for our fast paced lives. And these pause buttons actually allow you to get a bit of a wider picture again. It's like when you're running this wheel, nine to five all day, every day, and then you go on holiday, what usually happens? You become sick mm -hmm. because your body was constantly pushing, 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 pushing. And then you give him a chance to rest. And first thing he does is, oh, thank you. Now I can show everything. And you go like, oh, great. I have three weeks holiday in the year. And in these three weeks, I'm sick. Yeah. Well, like, God, think about it. So go out. Go out in nature. Allow yourself this pause button. Allow yourself to feel, because it's so much easier to feel when we are surrounded by this peaceful environment nature is that is where we humans belong we belong out in nature we do not belong in square buildings with artificial insulations and all that and just the glass where you can see what's happening outside and that is most of the time another building uh, we are in a lucky position we are uh, quite we're, uh, settled in nature but not a lot of people are that doesn't matter when you're in this that doesn't mean that when you live in a city you're like oh okay what is she talking about i can't do none of that because i'm living in a city no there's trees in the city there's dreams in the city even if you take off your shoes and walk barefoot on the concrete you do touch the ground so it's so important of course the more natural it is the better but even if you pick yourself a little flower and put it in your in your room and give it a couple of seconds to look at it to thank thank the flower for for brighten up your day it's really tiny things like you said you can only sleep in one bed you can only drive one car and at the end of the day close your eyes and you see what you're going to take with you on this earth none of that Absolutely. and none of that you need to survive either but it's for me the interesting thing in our society is that we are constantly in this outsider so everything has to come from the outside uh, on a healthy level you 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 hit yourself on the knee when you're a kid mommy you're crying mommy comes she puts a band-aid on top so what do you learn subtly you learn ah okay so if i'm hurt I put something on it from the outside and then it will heal. And that is in so many regards. So all our great advertisement is telling us if you want to be this and this, you need this and this item. So there's a product for any attribute you would possibly imagine wanting to have. Now, sorry to tell you this, there's no product in the world which will give you this. Yeah? It's all here. And once you go out in nature and connect yourself with nature, all these desires come down as well. All these artificial desires. You're not craving so much more for stuff from the outside because you feel, you can actually feel, and I think this is what it's about. You get back in this connection to allow yourself to feel. Because if we're really honest to ourselves in the normal all day, every day, do you allow yourself a lot to feel? What, what if? You would probably start bursting crying before you actually enter your workspace. Because you can't do it. You're so torturing yourself in order to function because that's what is expected of you by society. That's what they tell you. Life is hard. Life is a bitch. No pain, no gain. All these stupid core beliefs we got planted in here. But it's not just that. They are in our cells. Our body, it's like no, no life event is forgotten by your body. 
it is there. Whatever happened, your body knows about it. It has this memory, not for you to potentially um, uh, grasp it and say, oh, yeah, mm, okay, yeah, I remember exactly that was that, that was that. No, that is all saved in your subconsciousness and in your body. But this is, like the other day I've been hearing in, in seminar that was so interesting as well about working with your voice and the, the, the tonation and the vibration, what it does with your body. And there's been amazing experiments from Dr. Emoto in regards of water and, and what water's capacity. So if you think about how much you are consistent of water and what happens to it, if you speak to it, there we are again, really down, if you speak negatively to it, it, it will, you know, it's, it's not going to feel pleasant. So the same effect is the other way around. If you praise your body, you know, or if you be more positive, all your cells start dancing the happy dance. Mm -hmm. And this is going to raise the, your immune capacity as well. This, is, this happy dance will allow your body to come in an even better performance because you helping him to if you how often mm, what is it like um how often you have a pain and you think like oh not now oh really shitty timing oh no i have this interview now or i need to do that now or whatever so go away and is that happening most of the time it's not but if you would take a split second to just sit there, close your eyes, go to the pain with your, with your attention, give a bit light there or a bit love there, you will see what's gonna happen. It's gonna dissolve. But this, the, the more you suppress something, the stronger it will get. And you might've known, noticed this already on a personal level when you are, let's say, typical example, a partnership, a relationship. So when you are already a bit angry, when your partner keeps on leaving his socks on the floor in the bedroom every day, every day, and you keep thinking, okay, okay, you know, I'll take it, I'll take it. And then one day, he just puts his plate from the living room in the kitchen on the sink and is not going to put it in the dishwasher and you go mental. And afterwards, you ask yourself, it was actually not that bad. So where did all that come from? Yeah, that was all the suppressed, not putting his socks where they belong to in your eyes, piling up and piling up and piling up until you burst. And unfortunately, this burst happens most of the time with our beloved ones because we're so much closer to them. So even if it's your boss that is really annoying you and makes you so angry, you still swallow it there, you go back home, and as soon as your kid is doing something, maybe a bit stupid, but you know, it's a kid, you go mental. And your poor kid thinks, what have I done? So it's interesting how we act with this. And it's no problem if you don't want to scream at your boss in that moment, that's okay. But please make sure that you then don't scream at your child. Make sure you have a little gap in between somewhere where you take your time Take a pillow, scream in that. Imagine your boss again. Take that pillow, scream in that. Or whatever, you know, just what I love doing is just like dogs do. When dogs have stress, they shake it off. So I love doing a shaking meditation. Huh? I just go crazy. I just go outside and jump and scream and blah. But this you will notice. Oh, my God. That's like, wow. And it doesn't matter if somebody's looking or not. It feels awkward at the beginning, of course. But then the positive effect overlies the awkwardness. So you keep on doing it. <laughs> the, the emotions that are suppressed is a big, big factor in healing from cancer. And it's one that's so, so overlooked. When we keep our uh, emotions inside of us and through the behavioral profiling that I do, <clears throat> I, can, I can see if somebody's ill by looking at their behavior profile pattern. Um, I can tell what kind of yeah. illnesses they're likely to be suffering from according to their personality style. And it's just so spot on the whole time. And um, it's, it's just so important to release our emotions, whether it's happiness, anger, sadness, whatever it is, really, really important. Anyway, lovely to be speaking with you, Jennifer. How can people get hold of you? Um, you'll find 
on Twitter, Facebook mainly, holy mine, holy underline underscore, I think it's called holy underscore healthy. Um, there you find my uh, phone number as well. So for everybody who wants to call me, um, and yeah, there you see all my services. So I'm not just going on physical one-to-one -one walks with people out in nature. <clears throat> I do this for kids as well, by the way. I think really important to grab them really early so they stay in this connection with themselves before it's getting taken away by the society. And it just really quickly, it's so interesting to see if you try the same thing with a kid or an adult, the adult takes about six times longer. It's so crazy. Kids are like sponges. They're so connected with themselves. They know exactly what's good for them and they're not questioning it. That's the difference between the adult. You're so much in your mind, you're questioning it. And then it's like, mm. so anyway, so I'll do these walks with adults, with kids. Um, and I also do online consultation, of course, for all the people who can't be here close in central Portugal or for all the people wherever in the world. Uh, they, and some might not even have the physical capacity yet to move even though that's one of the reasons I walk, I think in motion, it's much easier to release emotions. Huh? So mm -hmm. the word itself actually says it, it's an energetical motion. And that's what it is. So yeah. this is why motion helps so well to get them out. Yeah, Facebook, mm -hmm. contact details. And I am in your perfect wellness health club as well. Yes. Perfect yes. health wellness club, that's the way. Yeah, so if people um, are connected through you, of course, they will find me there as well. Fantastic. I'm just going to spell the Holly Healthy for, for the listeners. Um, so it's, it's, yes. it's on Facebook. It's a Facebook page, H-O-L-I underscore healthy. And that's on Facebook. Yeah. Fantastic. Thank you so much for your time today, Jen, and look forward to seeing you online within the Perfect Health Wellness Club. Take care. <laughs> Thank you so much, Elaine, for having me. It was a great pleasure. And uh, you are such a big light for people as well. I think your approach is so great. What you just said with this behavior, th this is so spot on. This is one of the greatest prevention we can actually have through people like you. And um, what some people forget, but I know, because uh, we are on the, on the very same boat that um, really straightly speaking we had to eat a lot of shit in order to know all this now and to be able to get out with this to people and I think what we both hope for is that just some of the people don't have to eat that much amount of shit in order to learn Yeah. so yeah, in, in favor to yourself, uh, um, use and learn from the experience others had and be wiser. <laughs> spot on, spot on. Jennifer, thank you so much. Um, Jennifer from Holly Healthy. Thank you.